Good morning, gamers. How is everyone doing? Personally, I'm really tired, but we're still gonna stream because that is what we do here. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to a... Oh, hey, thanks for subscribing. Uh, that's the... That's the new notification noise right there. Oh, wait, that chat's in the wrong place. You guys are way too big. Let's just bring this down. Maybe bring it down here a little bit. Um, my incredibly obvious joke from when he first asked what the name of the final gamer fan should be uh, has finally picked up. Hey, look, the finalists, the final people, people love it. It's, 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 the gimmick is over. And the people are going wild. We're gonna we're gonna sell a million t-shirts. I should I should really I should really do a final gamer t-shirt. Uh Fox, oh, when you're hey, when you're editing this um just just whip up any fucking t-shirt. It doesn't matter. These these fucking kids they'll buy anything, Fox. They'll they'll buy goddamn anything. That ought to hold the little SOBs. Gabo, quiet. Oh, I would want to offend the little SOBs. So I guess first order of business um, was the final gamer Fear and Hunger 2 charity stream last uh, Saturday. And um, it was a fucking blast. I've had a bunch of people kind of say to me like, oh, you know, you went for 15 hours, was it hard or whatever? Uh, genuinely, the only part I found hard was like the last hour and a half. You know what I mean? Like, that is when it really hit me. Up until then, I just had a great time. Got to got to hang out with a bunch of homies and play Fear and Hunger 2. It was so fun. It was a really, really good stream. We, we raised $21,000, which, like, not just saying this, so much more than I thought we would raise. Like, it was, it was really, really fun. Um... <laughs> to be fair, you had fun. you had to talk to Fox Cade for the last era, so it's not surprising it was tough for you. An unusually vicious burn there from just to watch. Yeah, I thought I thought it was a really really fun stream. Um, I thought Fear and Hunger Two. Oh hey, thanks for subscribing. Was awesome. And I've been thinking about it all week and been excited to play it oh, again hey, all week. Thank you for the subscriptions, everyone. I will I will get to so thank yous in a little bit. But first, I just wanna just wanna sit here and chill. Just just wanna just wanna talk to the people. Wave to the people. I've been watching a lot of Simpsons for reasons that will become obvious in oh, let's say three weeks, maybe. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Oh hey, um, thanks for subscribing. But yeah, yeah, no, it it was cool. It was a really, really cool stream. I then I, then I so basically did the stream Saturday, slept Sunday, had to get on a plane to London Monday, and um, did a thing over there. Which don't know if I can proper talk about that oh, yet. Hey, thanks for but um, I, I think 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 people think people will be relieved that 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 happens and that was really fun. Um, I was on the plane back. And I swear to God, I saw the tallest fucking man I have ever seen in my life. Like, he was sitting down, and he was gigantic. And he gets up, and he just fucking keeps going. This guy was so huge. Like, he was so huge that people were taking photos of him. Um, like, coming up to him and asking him for photos. That's how freakishly gigantic this man was. And I overheard someone talking to them, and they asked how high, how tall he was, and he was seven foot four, seven foot four. Um, it was interesting. I've never been around someone that. Uh, do you think you can teach that? No, no, absolutely not. And it's funny because, like, a couple of times on this on these streams, we've gotten into conversations of, like, well, could someone with martial arts be someone, like, who's much bigger than them? And for the most part, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I think if you're, like, well-trained in martial arts, oh, hey, you can take someone, you know, 50, 60, 70 pounds bigger than you. I was looking at this dude, and I was like, no, nah, this is like that... The, in Grappler Backy, there's this thing where they talk about how 1% of people are immune to martial arts. They are too big, too naturally strong for martial arts to work on them. And if that's true, 
this dude, like, he falls into that category. At any point, he could have stood up on that plane and been like, this is my plane now, and everyone just would have had to been okay with it. Like, that's how that would have gone. Um, What's the best martial art for a tall lad? Um... Oh, hey, thanks for subscribing. Probably something... I would say either boxing, oh, hey, kickboxing, Muay Thai, something like that. Something that's going to really take advantage of those long limbs. So he was essentially pickle. Yes, absolutely. I'm like 175 centimeters. It's okay, buddy. I think that's around what I am. Like, five... Five foot seven... And a half! And a half, chat! And a half in centimeters. No, I'm like four centimeters shorter than you, dude. You're fine. You got loads of room. You, you got you, you got room for days. You, you're fine. Um, that, look, th I just... The reason I get so specific about the half, chat, is because if we're going to be fucking real here, and... I'm going to admit my actual size. I'm taking that half. Okay? I, I'm this isn't it's this isn't like round down. I'm just giving you my precise height. With a good pair of shoes, chat, I will breach 5 foot 8, god damn it. I will do it. Um rise up 6 foot 3, Greg, but not too fast. Don't want to get dizzy. Listen, you're 6 foot 3. Buddy, you, you don't you don't need a gang. Life has always already granted you so much privilege. So you have no idea. You have no idea how easy you have it. At least in terms of height. I cannot speak for the infinity of other variables that may make your life a crushing disappointment. But I, you, in that one, you're you're doing pretty good. In that, you're doing pretty good. Um. John, could you take oh, my brother? Hey, he's 5'11", and he's also a powerlifter. Um, if you're asking for, like, an honest opinion on that, in a full-contact MMA-style fight, probably. Um, like, if he's... It, it, like, it's it's not just about how strong he is. If he's super, like, there's a difference between someone being really strong and being someone, someone being really athletic. And if he's a good combination of that, that would probably be hard, but... Oh, hey, if he's one of those driving. real stocky weightlifter guys who like can't move, we get them in training all the time, and I pull their fucking arms off. Um, so probably I don't know. Um, send me his picture, or no, you should send him my picture and this clip, and then you should dox me and find out where I live and send him here. I think that's a good idea. I think that's a real safe idea for everyone involved um john could you take me in a fight i am in br i'm bronze in league of legends uh no i could not because i could never find you because i'm guessing you don't go outside um how would bjj respond to someone completely covered in vaseline with a pair of bra brass knuckles interesting <laughs> oh hey thanks for subscribing. that's pretty good that's pretty good i mean i guess it depends if we're doing gi or no gi right so yeah that's about it I don't have a whole lot of news. I Like, the only thing oh, I'm doing hey, is, like, pumping a few hours into Baldur's Gate whenever I can. Because I'm fucking obsessed with that game. But other than that, I've just been chilling. Just just chilling in London with some people. Um, mm -mm. Let's go. Okay, no, it's time. It's time. Now, let me think here. Let me just make sure I'm playing the patched version here. So chat, we're going to start completely again. Um we are Oh hey, thanks for subscribing. We're going to start a brand new save. We're going to go fresh into this completely from the beginning. Um so what I will say is keep in mind I know less about Fear and Hunger 2 than I do about Fear and Hunger 1. I will tolerate some light backseat gaming, but if I get people getting salty at me for not doing certain things or reading certain books or whatever, I'm going to be handing out cool cooldowns and, and bans. I'll fucking do it, chat. 
This ain't this, this is the final gamer. This ain't super eye patch wolf. I'm not I'm not a nice person, okay? You you better watch it. Uh, John, sorry to backseat, but landmines equal bad. Um you know what chat, I don't appreciate the, the sass. Um I'm instigating a new rule on these streams. Uh everyone has to be nice to me all the time. Okay? Um I'm a I'm a very serious person. And I deserve to be taken seriously. In fact, you, you know what? Let's um, let, let let let's all just you know what? No chat for the next four minutes. Um, so I'm gonna request everyone stop typing and now. Uh, sorry. I, clearly, some people did not hear me. Um, I can still see that the chat going. And there's, uh, okay, that's better. That's better. Okay. So I do believe this is the right one. Oh, hey, thanks for subscribing. Uh, no subscriptions either, chat. Uh, I'm going to take the person who just subscribed there and ban them. Um, so be warned. You can only support my career when I allow you to. Is that understood? Guys, is this the first Fear and Hunger 2 stream? We are starting again, oh, so hey, kind of. Okay. New game. Um, uh, who's Olivia? Is this Olivia? Is this Olivia? Botanist. Botanist. Sick. Okay. Okay. Because this is our first game, I'm gonna replay everything again. So we're gonna we're gonna do the intro bit. Skip the character's history. Um no. The soothing sound of the rail tracks. You are not used to such peaceful and tranquil atmosphere. You can't help but let your mind wander. You reminisce. What has led you to this point in life? You remember moths. Blue moths. Blue noctude moths, to be precise. This is your first... For, look, for any fucking moth expert that comes on here and is like, Um, that's... That's not how you pronounce the blue nocta... That... No! I... I don't... I can't know everything! Okay? I... I just can't! Um... You and your twin sister sitting in the backyard, illuminated by the cold blue hue of the moon. Instances where it was just the two of you sharing a moment were rare. This is probably why those moments matter the most. You and your twin sisters were born at the strike of midnight, um, at the turning point of months. Thus, you were born with different birth signs. One was born with a shadowed soul and one with a radiating soul. Since that moment, it was evident that the two of you would lead very different paths in life. Just as predicted, you were the polar opposites. <laughs> excellent, excellent point from... Um, Catus in the chat here. The final gamer is not the final linguist. Look, guys, all my experience points went into one thing, okay? Gaming. And if you expect more from me than that, buddy, that's on you. That ain't my problem. That, that's on you. Uh, just as predicted, you were the polar opposites of each other from very early on. You were fragile and weak in build, whereas your sister Raelia was active and advent was an active and adventurous child that could have easily been an athlete if she had just chose to. You stuck indoors reading books for most of your time. Your sister spent her time outside making friends with other kids of the neighborhood. Despite your differences, you took solace from each other in the strict religious household you grew up in. One thing was common between the two of you. You both wanted, you both wanted out of the ever watching eyes of your parents and their religious dogma. You found escapism from the nature, and botan. You found escapism from the nature and botanism. I think that may, may mean might mean in nature and botanism. Your sister also began uh, 
being academically gifted, took interests in science. She would dedicate her time to new sciences that centered around advanced engineering and top of the line technology. Her taking interest in academia did irk you a little. It's as if as she stepped into your territory. I think I'm gonna stick to botanism. I think that's 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 the move. Can you please move the chat so it's not covering the screen? Sure thing. Uh, we will move it up here. You decided to concentrate on your own doings instead of giving to the giving into the jealousy and being quickly bared fruit. Please keep the chat there, but make it two hundred percent bare. Okay, give me. Oops. Make it a little bigger. I don't want to overlap in too much of the screen. Although we could just pull this down a little bit. Hmm. I really need to get like a proper overlay. Okay, we'll leave it at that for the moment. Um, you decide to concentrate on your own doings instead of giving to, into the jealousy. And it quickly bared fruit. You learned undergrowth awareness. While occupying yourself with the world of botanism, your sister would often quietly join your reading sessions, burying herself in her own books. Despite the, the, your differences, these reading sessions really create a strong bond between the two of you. During your high school years, a disaster struck. You suffered multiple small strokes in a short period of time and was left bedridden. Naturally, you were terrified by what you could have, what could have been causing this. Your parents first turned to religious healers for aid. Boo! But nothing seemed to work. I have a video on that. Um, your sisters tried. Your sister tried to persuade them to seek out modern doctors, but your parents were slow to react to her pleads. After getting no results, your parents finally gave in. But it was too late at that point. The diagnosis had been. Uh, the diagnosis was that you had an abnormality of the spinal cord that affected the blood flow and its supply. You underwent a long operation in hopes of fixing the issue, but unfortunately things didn't go well and you were bound for a wheelchair for the, for, for the unseeable future. If something had been sooner, maybe you could have been different. What followed was an intense period during which you tried many different medical treatments, all for nothing. There was no escaping the wheelchair. Your legs did, did, uh, did have some minor function, but they were left far too weak to carry out the weight properly. The world felt like such an unfamiliar and hostile place after all you had gone through. All this just further created contrast between you and your sister. You couldn't help but be envious of her. Her life seemed to roll forward without hiccups of any kind, whereas you struggled with each step you took, quite literally. Man, this is this is rough. Nevertheless, the two of you were con uh, continued, if not on the same path, then on the same lane at the very least, as you both entered the same university in Berman. Naturally, you were studying botanism and natural sciences, and your sister studied new computer sciences and engineering. You were both tremendously relieved. You had... What year does this play take place in? Like, I know it's kind of post-World War. Um, I know it's kind of like post-World War II-ish, but when? 1942. They had computer sciences in 19... Science in 1942? Wow. Um... You both were tremendously relieved. You had finally moved out of your parents' sphere of influence. Like always, you and Raelia were the polar opposites. Why have things been any different? Why would things have been any different in university? You had trouble getting acquainted with other students, but your sister, on the other hand, was already leading the student council and was even getting very familiar with one of the university professors. Try to steal the affection of the professor. Just concentrate on your own studies. Expose the. What do we? What do we do in chat? What's What's the move here? Just concentrate. Okay, just look, just... Olivia strikes me as the kind of advanced botanism. Good lord. Just as you expected, your sister and professor had an obvious connection. You were not sure whether you felt jealous for the fact that your sister garnered the attention from the opposite sex or that someone else was forming a connection with her. Either way, you didn't think too much about it. It wasn't all bad anyway as you made good friends with your professor through your sister. Your student life continued smoothly and you were constantly ranked at the top of your class and the nature seemed to lift and the nature seemed to lift its veil of secrets the further you got into your studies your sister did even better at school apparently she was particularly a genius in her field she took part in a special student exchange program between the Burman, or the Bremen Brahmin Empire and the Eastern Union she would get to see the world while you were stuck in your laurels nothing new you 
there you pondered. In any case, the time had come for you to choose where you would specialize your botanical studios. Specialize in folkloric side of botanism, botanism or toxicology chat. Toxicology. I, I, I've always liked poison Pokemon. Oh, has someone done that? Has someone done like Pokemon fan art of, of Olivia? Because that, that'd be sick. You learned toxicology. Um, you graduated starting your own research in botanism while also working at the bigger greenhouse in Brahman. What should have been a brand new start to life felt more like you falling into place to gather moss, living your life through your sister's amazing tales. Her research abroad seemed to open many doors for her. The Eastern Union hired her to work in top secret facilities around the central Europa. You would receive letters from her frequently, always from a different country. Um, she could never fully reveal what she worked on, but she did say that despite working for the army, her inventions would be for the better of mankind, not for war. It all sounded incredible, but you were genu and you were genuinely happy for her, really. Only the letters came to a halt all of a sudden. You didn't hear from Raelia for months. After six months, your parents got information that Raelia had been accused of treason. She had committed a serious crimes against Brahm the Brahmin Empire. That's at least the official story. By the time you heard of this, she had already been in the undisclosed Brahmin prison for months. You felt hopeless. There wasn't much you could do. The next time you heard of this, heard of her, was when you read the news about a terrorist group called Nameless Liberty Underground breaking her free from prison. What had your sister gotten herself into? A terrorist organization? So if you did not catch the charity stream, this is like the first crazy thing about uh, Fear and Hunger 2. There's a lot of story. You had definitely heard of the Nameless Liberty Underground before, but where? Then you remembered. Prof the Professor Raelia had been seeing during her school years had mentioned an organization and in passing comments. You returned to the university to confront the professor, only to find out that he had been executed several months prior. He too had been accused of treason and had se been sentenced and hanged in the middle of a battlefield. Something weird was definitely going on. You got to search through his office and found several letters from Raelia. Apparently the two had been in uh, letter correspondence for long after Raelia graduated. The last letter from her, Raelia had a cryptic warning about a cube. <gasps> the cube of darkness! The cube of darkness! Let me just center myself up here. Um, in Eastern Europe that had been desperately trying to replicate the cube but to no avail, whatever that meant. Raelia was worried that the operation in Priavel, Priavel um was what Kaiser of the Brahmin Empire was after. There was still time before he could go. I still have time. These were Raelia's last words. Upon further investigation, you found that Preyavel was a modern-sized city, was a medium-sized city in the country of Bohemia. That is the last known location of your sister, and that this is where you decided to head without delay. With a real adventure ahead of you, how did you prepare for the trip? Find something to read for your travels. Stock up on herbs, stock up on food. I am going to find something to read because books are generally rarer than herbs or food. You managed to find Alchemic Alchemelia Volume 1. You felt tense since the moment you embarked on the journey. Every night you'd see nightmares of the horrors that would wait you in Prehavel. Are they just dreams? You can't help but feel that there is more to the dream more to dream the dreams than mere logic would dictate. Save your character's history, let's do it. Previl. Uh, pre Prehavil. Prehavil. Skip the intro. No. Prehavil. Okay. It's going to be Prehavil from now on, and I refuse to take any more corrections about that. You can get on and off your wheelchair. Oh. I don't want to make her crawl around on the ground. No answer. I think that's Marco, is it? No answer. 
Six shillings. Three matches. Uh, I have yet to discover what the matches are actually for. Uh, this is the, oh, I, this is such a great piece of horror. The um, <laughs> I just love that. It's like you enter this hall and it's like it's normal, it's normal, it's normal. And now it's not normal because that's too many. And then it keeps going and then it's the entrance to a fucking nightmare cave. Janitor, you... I've been looking for you everywhere. Just where do you... Th no, I, I gotta do a voice for this guy. Hang on. Um, just where did you think you ran off to? Don't you understand the hurry we are in? Get your hands off me! Yeah, yeah! A feisty one! The eyes of the gender bulge out of their sockets as his expression intensifies. We can do it the hard way too. So this guy chases you around for a- Oh god! I- Oh no! Oh, I pressed the button too late! No! So this did not happen in the charity stream. In the charity stream, uh, we, um, in the charity stream, we avoided this lad. Okay, run, toxicology, advanced botanism, undergrowth, awareness. Um, well, chat, your advice has completely fucked me. And, uh, I think I'm about to die. Yep, this is pretty bad. Okay, we, we're, we're, he's missing. So here's a new mechanic in Fear and Hunger 2 that's pretty cool. This is Rev Up, and basically it lets you charge up your attacks and make them more powerful. Okay, that's that down. Man, we're doing it. I think we're gonna fucking kill this guy. What are you gonna do now, buddy? Yeah, that's right! That's what just happened. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, do we have anything? We don't. Um... I'm gonna rev up and go for his torso. When you use three rev points, you attack twice. Oh, we're nearly dead. Oh, yeah! God damn, I'm actually kind of surprised we beat him. Now, what did he drop? Oh, nice. That's a big attack bonus. Aside from the fact that we got the shit beat out of us there, that was... We're doing all right. Oh, hey, thanks for subscribing. Olivia... Olivia is is a little fucking warrior. Don't 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 let her quiet demeanor fool you. The, she Olivia stone cold killer as we have all just seen. Oh hey, thanks for subscribing. Your head hurts. You feel like you're losing your mind. Oh, this is so fucking cool. I guess Olivia got some power in her arms from rolling around. Oh, I mean, you know what? I already thought she was pretty cool and she's winning me over every every goddamn second. Got you pulled out from that nasty place. You're going deep into that rabbit hole. Now you're, hang on, hang on no, let me do a voice. Now you are safe under the beautiful green hue of the moon. Welcome to the moon tower. 
What is going on? That is what I am here for. To explain the situation you are currently facing. To explain the great once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that has befallen within your grasp. Since our words could not possibly reach my master, I speak on his behalf. And who might my master be? Well, that's, let's just say that's for the... Well, no, I fucked up that. Well, for now, let's just say that he is the delinquent one, rare, the trickster moon god. And me? You can call me Perkle. I am just a humble servant of his, of his celestial majesty. You are the dreamer. He is the dream. My master has invited 14 of you to join us in this jubilee of cosmic proportions. Per ke le gotcha. 14 candidates, but only one true victor. The festival of Termania is upon us. I don't want any part in this. Ah, but it is not a matter of what you want any longer. My master doesn't give options, and frankly, neither do I. This must be all very confusing to you. I won't burden you with any more information at this very moment. Just head towards the tower. That is all you need to know for now. I will gladly answer questions once you are there. But until that, let us meet again under the moonlight. You wake up suddenly. Was it all a dream? Even your sister? The bloody Kassara down your hands gives you shivers. Just what is going on? Man, I am shocked we beat that guy. The train, it seems to have stopped. Um, how's the sound chat? You hearing those up those those little footstep noises? Um, congrats on the foot cancer stream. Thank you very much, Defile Zero. Appreciate it. The game's a little quiet. I think it might be a little quiet. Hang on. Because this game has some awesome ambient music, and I, I don't want to miss out on any of that. Map. This man in the suit is talking to himself. He seems completely lost in his own thoughts. So that uh, man with checkered pants, so this might be the best course of action. I have gone through this cutscene before. I think we'll actually just skip it on... Th uh, God damn it. Um, we're all kind of waiting for you, actually. I was going to say we skip it. I have accidentally just begun it, so I guess we're doing it. You must be just as clueless as the rest of us. The train left us all here at the outskirts of the city. All the train personnel, everyone is gone. No explanations. Am I still dreaming? No, I'm pretty sure you're wide awake now. You could always pinch yourself to make sure, though. We decided to stay here and wait for a while. Someone has to come for the train sooner or later. So if you're not in a hurry, I recommend just going back inside and trying to relax. What's your name? I ain't giving no one my name. Or you can always stay a mystery. That's cool, too. Well, in any case, my name is Marina. Marina is a bit of a fan favorite. To, to people in the chat. Um, oh, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but you can sleep on that couch in the train to pass time. Now, that, that, that's some good... That, that's a good piece of advice. Thank you. You can call me August. Uh, Karen Sawyer, a journalist on duty. Blonde man. Hey, I'm Henrik. And this mystic gentleman over here is Osa. It was Osa, right? Osa does not respond. Silly man. I'm pretty sure it was. We were the first to wake up. You're wondering if this is still a dream. You saw the weird nightmare too, right? That's right. Yep, I figured as much. And get this. 
we all saw the same nightmare. The moon, the girl in the pink dress, the festival of Termina. Really creepy, isn't it? Not this talk again. We should have asked that army pig, that Brahmin pig. He was in way too much of a hurry to leave. I bet he knew something. This smells like a sadistic army experiment. Sounds exactly like something the Brahmin army would be a part of. They had a similar hallucinogen. Hallucinogens experimented on war prisoners. Now that war is over, they have to get to the guinea pigs every elsewhere. They have to get their guinea pigs elsewhere, sorry. I really have a hard time believing every conspiracy theory around here. I'm a journalist. I've covered wars, you know. He said, she said, she said, she said the meme. She did it. I don't need some flaky eye-patched foreigner telling me what's possible and what's not. Uh, that's what, I made this joke on, on, the, on the charity stream. That's what people who don't like my uh, videos say as well. Uh, you haven't seen what I've seen during these past few years. Um, I've covered wars too. You know, all men and women for the past decade or two have covered wars. What's your point again? I've seen my fair share of hallucinogenics as a doctor, and I can tell you from first-hand experience there is no known chemicals that creates visions this vivid, especially visions, visions that are identical with this many people. You can feel the tension rising between these two people. The sexual tension. As far as I know, I don't, I don't know anything about these characters. I take it that we're done here. As much as I'd like it, I don't have any time to play happy campers with you people. I have a job to do. Which way is the city? And um, thank you so much for reading this to us, John. I have post-concussion syndrome and can't look at it on the screen that much. I really appreciate it. That's no problem. When there's not like a million characters on screen, I'll do voices because I like doing voices. How did you get concussed? Uh lightning can you see the tower standing erect in the mist the tower marks the center of Prihavil. Um, you can hike through the forest to get there it's not that far away oh that's such a nice little cinematic Haha, <laughs> erect. I thought about making a joke, and then I didn't. If I see anyone, I'll let them know you guys are waiting here. Um, have fun finding a scoop from that sleepy town. You know where to find us if anything comes up. Um, I need to be going too. Sure thing, don't let us slow you down. Fucking the graphic design in this game it is so it's kind of awful but in a way that absolutely fucking rules like look at these menus look at this look at this beautiful like I just I love the real like calligra calligraphic text and the way it barely makes sense it just gives you a bunch of letters and then just the the pointless nonsense floating oh, about it's it's I great it's so it. good um okay so now we need to have a little think about what our actual route is going to be um i think what i would like to do is try and get into the um try and get into the city as quickly as possible You still have the the Kassara? I do. Save the redhead or the gentleman. And um, it's not easy for the train to stop, which means it won't start up either. God, you can just attack her straight away. That's crazy. Um, so I think what am I, I'm going to do is head straight for the mayor's mansion. we should go after the salary man we can go after the salary man but i think maybe we'll just keep going this way 
go straight to the bunker with the elephant monster. So I don't think we actually need to go to the elephant monster if we're taking the sewers. There's a dick. Let's just roll on past that. Non-zero chance of dicks, everybody. Check out the herb spot again. Really? A dark blue root. No way! Oh! These are her botany powers. I'm guessing. Where was that? I'm guessing it's only her who can get the roots, right? John's ability to see dicks is way higher than mine. Uh, well, li listen, let's, uh, <laughs> you know, we all have our skills, right? I did spend, like, um, two entire days censoring dicks in the Fear and Hunger video. So, uh, you know, it's like I was saying with martial arts earlier. If you, if a friend plays 200 hours of Street Fighter, if your, spend, if your friend spends two whole days... Uh, censoring dicks, you get pretty good at spotting them dicks, let me tell you. So, what do dark blue... Um, wow! That's insane. So basically, you get, every time you find a blue herb, you also find a more powerful blue herb. Yeah, there's a there he is. Don't want to deal with him. Okay, let's just keep heading along here. So one of the biggest differences between this game and the first game is I found at least when I played, and this might be a terror and starvation thing because there isn't a terror and starvation difficulty available for this game yet but um i found in general i was a lot less reliant on what i found in barrels there was a lot less circumstances where like i'd run into a situation and be like i need something like torches are not a thing in this game which is crazy to me it's a lot less like focused on survival although that's still an element of Aw, do I have to... Aw, poor Olivia, goddamn. Gouge at my eyes, but I still see the green hue. The green hue, it devours everything! So things are not going great for the residents of Termina. Cold. What's going on here? The moon scorched this land. It scorched us too! There's an old rusty hatch here. What's down here again? I don't think there's actually much down here. Shelves are full of spare parts. Find a sea ration. Find a bolt. Find a pipe wrench. So there's a whole new like mechanics system in this, I think. Or may maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe... Man, look at Olivia. Like she, she's, she can just support herself with bow arms. And um, check the box by the barrel. 
No, no wonder if she was able to take on the gender. Olivia, Olivia's a tank. Toolbox up here, you find a bone saw. Oh, that's what I can use for the heads. Okay, that's one of the first things I want to do here. Because I know there is a dude in this village, or at least somewhere similar, who is real into collecting heads. Meat pie, wheat flour. That's definitely an enemy, that guy there, and he'll attack us. It's crawling under my skin. Crawling! What's going on here? Crawling. Crawling in my skin. These wounds, they will not heal. Uh, no thank you. Find a lucky coin. So this dude is real into collecting heads. So what we want to do is we want to bring the priest's head and the huntsman he huntsman's head to this guy. And I'll see what I can do. The earliest heads look several weeks old, while the most recent seem to be freshly cut. Uh, we might have to fight that guy. I believe it's gaming time. A man runs straight at you with obvious killing intent. What is going on here? Your words are in vain. The moon scorches clearly out for blood. Oh man, okay, we're hitting hard. Oh man, we. He is down. Saw off his head. Severed arm and leg. And W on your keyboard. Gotcha. Thank you. Deflated lip. Hanging eyelid. Comb my face. Jesus. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's, uh, cure that infection, first of all. Um. And... So right now, if we check the map, we can say we're, like, really at the very outs- We're, 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 we're like, this little green dot down the bottom right, and, um... It's... We're really far from where we need to be. Nice. Light blue vials. Oh, awesome. Man, we, we got healing products for days. I think immediately you can kind of see, like, how different the vibe is from Fear and Hunger 1. Um, and this, this is one of the things that, like, really caught me off guard in the charity stream. Like, just how more polished it is. How much more, like set up the entire scenario is it's it's kind of crazy dirty toilet paper paprika glass file fine. it's you just what the hell is going on in this town what do you mean what you must have seen the shape these slums are in the shape these people are in. The scoop just became a lot bigger. I have to be careful what I wish for in future. What do you know about this scoop? I have my connections to different organizations and groups. One of the resistance groups against the Brahmin army tipped me that something was about to go down here in Prihavil. Apparently, there is a very specific reason why the Brahmin army occupied this area. I wasn't informed about anything else, really. I can't believe I wasn't even warned about this place. That guy will have a hell to, will have hell to pay for when I get back to civilization. Um, what do we do now? We don't do anything. I work alone. I have a scoop to investigate. Now the stakes are higher. That's all. 
I won't, it won't be safe alone. Are you worried about me or yourself? I'm sorry, but you'd probably be a lot safer if you returned to the train. I don't know... This must be the television room. They always point that out, but I don't know what we actually do in this room. Um, I do, as people are saying, I'm bleeding, but as far as I know, I don't actually... It can be used to type small wounds, stop bleeding. It doesn't. Uh, I think I might go with the open wound instead of putting dirty toilet paper on myself, personally. Is it just working? And there should be two guys in here. Let's see if we can get past them. Whoops! Yeah, we can. Uh, oh shit, oh shit, I, I know who's around here. Um, so here's the other big twist with Fear and Hunger 2. Uh, when you save, you advance time. And I don't want to advance much time yet, so we're not going to save right away. White file. Um, I don't think we're actually going this way. He's around here. Okay, this is where I wanted to be. Find a bone saw. You find the book of fears. You check the book for anything interesting. You find alchem uh, alchemic little volume three. You find recipes for the fifteenth and sixteenth century volume two. Interesting. You find the man in the dreams flyer. You check the book for anything interesting. You find the Prehavil documents. We're gonna we're gonna check out all these in a sec. Books about various subjects. You check the bookshelf for anything interesting. You find the book of enlightenment. Oh, awesome. Could this be the way? 17th century poetry is left here. The language has changed a great deal since then, and you don't bother seeing the effect right now. Okay. Uh, you experience all come three, the effects different color. So I think that toilet paper is going to infect us, but we do have a green herb. So I think maybe let's just take the risk. Oh, didn't infect us. That's wild. I thought that would heal us more. It did not. It poisoned us. Damn it. Okay. That's not great. Book of Fears. It isn't poison. What is it? It heals over time. A reverse poison. That's awesome. Oh, that's so cool. The recipes are cultivated from the memoirs of the infamous Chef Andres that worked at the Royal Kitchen of Rondon at the time. It appears that Chef Andres has a serious rivalry with, the pre <laughs> with previous Chef Al Alex... I don't, I don't, I don't know, chat. I, I tried my uh, Alexia. 
The rivalry escalated to the murder of the latter, after which the chef Andrews created a royal feast out of his remains in all secrecy. Now that you look at it, the book seems to be more about royal gossip than food recipes. Between all the murder and betrayal, you find recipes for Andrea's famous goulash and mushroom stew. Looking back like, at the history of this place, there has been a settlement here for as long as the history books cover the area. It has always centered around the mysterious hollow tower that works at the center pillar of the community. The city flourished during a cruel age in the 1600s, but it quickly fell from prominence the closer we got to the modern times. I understand the city is a medium in size as far as cities in Eastern Europe go, but still I find it hard to believe that this place would serve as a hub for any kind of civilized world. For some reason, the government of officials insist that Priaville Prihaville keeps its capital identity despite being one of the more remote and unwelcoming cities in Bohemia, if not all of Europa. The only explanation I can come up with is that the country is proud of the old archaic rituals that still go down in this city that they want to show their full support. If we were to visit Prihaville um, and sightsee a, its small centre, you'd see glimpses of the ancient glory days still well and alive in these modern times. Do not let the Western-style shopping district with its latest movie posters and advertisements fool you. The locals still worship the old world in the dark and crumbling parts of town. Ritualistic murder sites are just around the corner no matter where you are in the city, while the churches look to be dedicated to our one true god, Almer, from the outside. Inside tells a whole different story. Ancient gods without a name in any known language still linger in these crypts, and why wouldn't they? You could hear the priests chant their mass in the moonlight alleys during the dead of night. The whole city is a wicked playground for the ancient beings and the people living there, offer themselves to to the first takers without a second thought. Mm. Man in dreams fire. Hey, I know that guy. Have you seen this man in the dreams? Over the past week or so, since the full moon, people all over Prihaville and its neighboring settlements see this face in their dreams every night. If you are one of them, or if you have any information that can help us identify this person, please contact us. The flyer tells to contact us, but there is no contact information to be found on the flyer. Why is that so spooky? That is... That is unnerving. Nothing's left here. I'm gonna fight the door. I fought the door and I lost. Useful for nine millimeter bullets, like vial. Okay, okay. The bookcases along the wall. For all mere's sake, you startled me. Don't go sneaking up on me like that. Now, if you'd excuse me. This is old Henrik. Uh, he's he ain't he ain't doing so good. He's a little spooked. That's okay. His eyes are darting around the ceiling. He is seemingly distressed. Uh, are you okay? Can you hear that? I can hear a clock, but I can't see the goddamn thing. So the way this game works is like, we could come back here tomorrow and there would be different shit happening in this building. I can smell rosemary and garlic. I'm starving. He's got a crazed expression on his face. You notice, you notice his eyes gazing right through you. Smell it. Definitely. You can't fool me. Snap out of it. Oh. Oh. Sorry about that. I don't know what got into me. First I was just lost in thought, but the next those thoughts consumed me. There's something wrong about this place. I came here to find something to eat. Not just for me, of course. Food for the people on the train. I figured that could be a way of helping everyone in this situation. You saw all the food at the dinner table. This used to be the mayor's manor. He must have stashed all the food somewhere else. Um, help me find the food storage and we'll be out of here. Oh, yeah, you can also pick up the glass shards. I don't know if I ever figured out what to do with them.
And down the bottom right, we have a... Uh, well, we got our, our our first our first dude who's gonna require some taking care of. Actually, I want to check what the glass does. So we've taken this guy on before and he wasn't that tough. You can cook quite waste ingredients. Okay, understood, understood. Okay, here we go. Whoa. -oh. So some people this this if you're if you're like from the US or mainland Europe uh, this this guy might seem unsettling uh, this is just an Irish priest this is what they all look like and how they all act so this is a very natural thing for me oh critical hit he has hurting Priest reaches out to you. Uh No! The priest grabs you violently by the throat. The priest's grip is incredibly strong. Your throat is being crushed under the intense grip. The last thing you see is the manic grin on the priest's face and you lose consciousness. Are we dead? Oh! Yeah, I think we're dead, chat. Oh. You keep fading in and out of consciousness. You can't shake the idea. Your legs. You feel dizzy, lightheaded, and hopeless. Oh. This must be it for you. Unless... Oh my. No way we're actually still alive. Let's get you down from there, my friends. Oh, hey, thanks for subscribing. There. It's not much, but at least you're patched. Oh, no fucking way. Hey, they're back again. Listen, I'll create a diversion and lead these lead those poor people elsewhere. Uh, look, buddy, I don't have too much sympathy for those people right now. Like, I get that perhaps they're a victim of circumstance, but I do think that ends the moment you cut someone's limbs off and tie them to a giant spiked cross and drain their blood into a fountain. Like, not to lack empathy here, but I think we don't need to acknowledge that right now. Listen, I'll create a diversion to lead these poor people elsewhere. Uh, you have to get yourself out of here in the meanwhile. Here are your clothes and equipment. Get dressed quickly. I know it's a lot to ask, but try to do your best, okay? I'll find you later. Just try and survive until then. You're up for it. Uh, yes? Good. Well, I'm off. Good luck. I... I'm so shocked we are still alive. And I guess what we don't suffer any penalty because we already had the, the wheelchair, which is cool. Oh, hey, thanks for subscribing. What the fuck was that? That was so spooky, holy shit!
Okay, now we're in the forest at night. Um, not gonna lie to you, chat. Kind of... This has basically scuppered my whole... I, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Uh, except being chased by a headless... I had a route planned, and I don't know what that route looks like now. Um, people are asking, is it typical for Irish priests to, uh, do what that priest just did? Um... Guys, don't be stupid. Of course it is. Uh, I like. I, I'm I'm looking out my window right now, and that that the thing that just happened in Fear and Hunger is literally happening outside my window. I'd be down there too, like holding hands with everyone if I didn't have to stream. But um, Father Father O Thompson understands that. He's like, hey John, we're gonna um we're gonna cut the limbs off a foreigner and string them up on a cross Friday. Do you want to join in? And I was like, Father. I got a stream, and he was like, oh, that's right, and I was like, you're such a knucklehead, father. And, uh, yeah, that's that's how that entire exchange went. Oh, Jesus Christ! Um, actually, I want your skull, motherfucker. Olivia lost her left arm. Poor Olivia, god damn it. What? Wait, hang on. So just to clarify what happened here, uh, his dick just came off, and now they're making me do a coin flip. I do not want to know what happens if I fail this. TWICE?! Uh, um, I'm going to read this next section out and I am going to disable the window. Violently... Uh... I, I'm not reading any of this. Uh, somehow? And... Well, some stuff happened, chat. Uh, there was some real, we'll call it facehugger-esque action there. Um... That might be the most tragic run of fear and hunger we have ever had on these streams. Uh, Olivia had it so rough and I feel so bad for her. <laughs> 